Welcome to the Havoc OS review of the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm going to be showing you the 22nd December 2019 build for this device. So let me show you the about section first. In the about section on top you will find the Havoc OS logo of course and then there is the Android version of course Android 10. The Havoc OS version is 3.0. The security patch is latest of December 5th 2019. The stock kernel here is the perf kernel. Let me go back from here. In the system panel, you won't be finding any system updater in this ROM. So yeah, that's how it is. You have to like flash it manually with the recovery and talking about flashing. Well, if you're in a different custom ROM, let me tell you that you need to download this ROM file and the bitgfs file, which I'll link in the description box below. And if you're decrypted, you need the fcrypt disabler. If you're not decrypted, you don't need to flash that. If you don't know what I'm talking about, here is a card for you on the corner right here. Then once you boot into the recovery and like first you need the MIUI 11 Android Q firmware. If you are not already on top of that, I am already on top of that. So I don't need to wipe vendor. So if you don't have the MIUI 11 firmware installed or if you're not coming from the latest MIUI 11 ROM, you need to flash that firmware. Now from here, we'll just go to wipe then dalvi cache system and data so just swipe to wipe these four things so once you have done that go to your like download folder and over here of course i'm gonna flash the latest build which is the 22nd like december 2019 build so i'll just select this then add to queue then like i'll select the g apps i will select the bit g apps android 10 version so ARM64 bit G apps I have been like selecting over here because open G apps is giving me some problems. So yeah, then add to queue again. Then I'll select the fcrypt disabler as I am decrypted. If you're not decrypted, then you don't need to flash the zip file. So once you have selected all those things, just like swipe to install. And in the system panel, we have this front camera effects and you can change these kind of sounds from here and it works great. So that's not a problem. And let me go back to the home. This wallpaper over here is kind of like looking like a Christmas wallpaper. And this is by default on this update. So that's great. And one really great thing which I'm noticing here is that we get the ANX camera by default over here. You don't need to flash this ANX camera separately. You can switch between the wide angle and the telephoto lens over here too. So no issues with that. The video modes and stuff will be working like flawlessly. Even 48 megapixel mode, I tested it. Yes, it works fine. And let me show you the slow motion and stuff here. We do get the 960 FPS slow mo and stuff. So those are not a problem. The ANX camera is working great. And if you want to install the Gcam, well, the Gcam 7 is working fine here too with the like wide angle and the telephoto lens. And if you don't know how to install this Gcam, I'll link a card over here. So do check that out. And now let me just jump into the settings. And here if you're noticing that the like Bluetooth device is connected and it shows the Bluetooth battery stats and stuff over here on the status bar, we get the configuration center of course in the settings and this is where the customizations are listed for this ROM and everything is like almost amazing. So inside status bar, we have the clock and date customization. You can like change position of it. You can enable like AM, PM, the date and stuff then the date font style and stuff. So a lot of like options are there. Even the formats are there. So no, not actually the fonts. I think you can only change the styles of the date. Let me go back. We have the Havoc OS custom logo. Brightness control from the status bar itself is there. So that's a great feature. I would say it is really helpful, like a must feature for me at least. And double tap to sleep and stuff is there on the status bar. Now, if you're noticing the Figment scanner on display, it looks like the OnePlus is Figment scanner kind of thing. And it works fine. Sometimes it sometimes just doesn't unlock as you can see. It took me about like three like failed tries as you can see. Doesn't unlock, did unlock. Sometimes it's a kind of uh, like weird experience I'm getting over here. If I double tap to wake the device and try to unlock it, it unlocks like for like 100% of the time. Now let me try unlocking the device. Doesn't unlock, did unlock. Took two tries. Let me do it again. It unlocks like from the always on display with one try and unlocks again. Let's do it with this finger. Doesn't unlock, doesn't unlock, doesn't unlock. So it did unlock. Took three failed tries. Then after that, the fourth time it unlocked. So yeah, it's kind of a weird experience. It's kind of a hit or miss, I would say. Sometimes it unlocks almost right away, as you can see. So that's how the Figment scanner is right now over here. And in the battery icon style, we have portrait circle, dotted circle, and the filled circle and stuff. 
then we have the battery percentage and here you can enable the battery percentage for always or like while charging we have the status bar logo and stuff and here we get the headset bluetooth etc icons of course and here we get the 4g icon and volte icon is enabled by default so that's not a problem bluetooth battery stats is there in the quick pull down we have the disabled and right and left choosing option then we have the battery estimate option and like you can enable it and from here you can see like how long your battery will last and stuff and background opacity is there for the quick setting toggles of this panel over here you can change the opacity of it we have the header image option if you need that we have the column and row number customizations then we have vibrate on toggle touch then brightness slider position changing options are there then settings icon edit icon and stuff is there let me go back to screen and it takes quite a lot of time to like go into screen as you can see you can change the framework values if you need and from here you can select and force all the apps to use the full screen over here i did that in the ambient display we have the battery level always on display and this is how it looks like when the device is charging in always on display and also 18 watt fast charging is working fine here so that's not a problem and it also shows the like charging info and stuff in the lock screen and in the buttons we have the power menu option here we get the advanced reboot and stuff so in the advanced reboot you can directly reboot to recovery fast boot or like boot loader and you can also enable it for the lock screen so that's a cool feature and screen of power button torch is there you can set it to long press power button toggle torch and from the lock screen let me show you this feature does work and it is really helpful on like evolution x and stuff it is not quite working with the always on display but yeah here it is working fine and over here in the gestures we have the jump to camera option then there is system navigation gestures well by default it is two button navigation gesture but you can set it to gesture navigation and use the android 10 kind of gestures swipe to take screenshot is there and it is working fine no issues with that and screen off like gesture is there you can set it to wake device so that if you double tap on the always on display it will wake the screen so this is a cool feature i would say and you can have multiple things over here too like toggle flashlight and stuff this might be helpful for some in the navigation bar we have the like invert layout and stuff if you're using those two button and three button navigation gestures this will be helpful and in the lock screen we have the double tap to sleep then media artwork then we have the music visualizer and stuff then fingerprint authentication vibration but the thing i was talking about is missing is that always unlock with the fingerprint scanner that feature is like too good it is present in the evolution x i'll any day choose evolution x just for that one feature with that i can directly reboot and i don't have to enter my pin i can directly unlock with my fingerprint scanner and here we have the status bar option and stuff then quick settings and charging info showing up option on the lock screen and in the notifications we have the charging led option then there is blink flashlight for incoming calls and stuff like miui and edge lighting option is there automatic color changing option i think is there and you can choose custom colors heads up disabling option is there and in call vibration stuff are present in the notifications and over here in the animations we can change the whole ui animation we also have the quick setting toggle like flip and rotate animations too we have the battery saver mode i am not really using it in the misc settings we have the wake up on charge disabling option and there is the charging animation which i showed you already looks pretty cool i would say now in the like display settings we have the night light option of course it makes the display yellowish pretty simplistic and let me go back we have the live display option you can change the whole screen rgb and huge saturation intensity of the screen and the screen attention mode is there i don't know like if it actually work or not here we have the lock screen display again for the always on display and stuff and anti flicker mode is there then we get the styles and wallpapers you can change the whole ui theme from here and also there is the like clock and stuff then wallpapers option if you need that and then there is the like accent colors you have bunch of accent colors like cyan mint pink red blue etc accent colors and even black is there and headline like body fonts options are there these are the fonts you get over here by default and icon shapes options are there now let me go back to the sound settings and here you get the like me audio direct and this should work fine i would say i did not test it with the like 3.5 mm headphone jack but this should work fine and we have also the enable hi-fi mode and then there is the screenshot sound and stuff disabling option and you can like change the audio output device from here you can choose it to this device or any bluetooth device if you are using that now let me talk about the rom's fluidity and stuff i would say the rom feels pretty smooth and here is the android score of this rom you can see the performance should be great here but let me tell you that the google pay and stuff is not simply working by default here it just shows google pay can't be used but you can flash magisk if you want to and use magisk hide if you are like into those things 
and let me show you the drm info here the drm info is level one so you can like stream netflix and amazon prime videos without any issues i think so that won't be a problem the widgets and stuff are working great in the home screen and let me show you you get a uh, like pixel launcher here this is a pixel launcher by default you get over here not so much of a customizations you get the google now cards to the left you can swipe up to get the app drawer you can swipe down to get the quick settings panel and stuff and the whole like user experience is pretty like smooth i would say it's kind of buttery smooth the stock dialer let me show you here it shows the video call option i don't know if it will actually work or not and here you do get a call recording option so that's great which is not present in evolution x so if you need like call recording option and stuff I would say go with the Havoc OS and Flash Magisk if you need Google Pay. Now let me open some of the apps and show you guys the app open speeds and the RAM management here. Let's open Facebook, Twitter, Play Store, YouTube, Instagram, Spotify. Now let's open all the apps from memory again. So the file explorer did open but it took a little bit of time. To show up and instagram chrome facebook twitter play store spotify youtube so as you can see all the apps stays in memory so no issues that i could find over here with the like ram management and stuff everything stays in memory and you can switch between apps just like this pretty easy and smooth now in terms of pubg graphics settings let me show you so it is showing me kind of a black border on the left side and also on the right side of pubg I think this is because I selected that like full screen usage with like the settings. I think if you disable that it will be gone. I don't know. So let me go into the settings and graphic settings. Here you can see you can play on HDR and extreme settings. So that is not a problem. You can like game pretty fluidly over here. As you can see the character is moving pretty fast and you can feel it with the 60 FPS video right here. The game performance should be pretty good over here. And the fingerprint scanner unlocking experience i would say on the evolution xrom is a little bit more like better when compared to the havoc ways right now i would say and over here you do not get the live wallpapers you don't get like anything over here so yeah but by default you get the live wallpapers of pixel 4 and stuff on the evolution xrom so you choose and the front camera led and stuff is working fine here so that is not a problem so what do I feel about this ROM? Well, I would say this is a pretty great option over Evolution X. The Evolution X is more precise and like stable ROM, I would say, just because it has been getting updates ever since and it has got a lot of updates. It's quite smooth experience and you get like the G apps in built in that ROM package and you don't need to like flash G apps on Evolution X if you are flashing that. But if you are flashing Havoc OS, you need the G apps to be flashed. So I would say if you want the call recording option, the NX camera and stuff by default, go with Havoc OS. But if you can flash the NX camera and stuff like separately, go with the Evolution X. And if you need the Google Pay and stuff, go with the Evolution X. Because Google Pay, if you want that in Havoc OS, you need to flash Magisk. And also that always unlocking with the fingerprint scanner option is just legit in the Evolution X ROM. So that was my opinion guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel down there if you have not yet. This is Tito from KD and Tech signing off for today. And I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye-bye now.